How are you guys doing? Welcome back. Today is March 10th, 2022. That was a roller coaster. Wasn't that fun? We had our nice down 1.5%, up another 1.1%, small little close there, a little red today. But overall, it was a pretty fine day in the stock market. If you are new here, how are you? How you doing? Hey, beautiful. How are you? My name is Evan. This is uh, By the Bulls Trading, the only stock market channel that encourages you to take your trading by the bulls. I'm Evan, aka my mommy's favorite, aka Lord of Cats. Meow. And of course, John Stonkton. Pulls up three pointer. Bang! Bang! Chef Boyar Swing. Hey, hey Mambo. Mambo Adalia. And of course, Bruce Wingstein. All these great things tailored together. If you are new, I'm sure you probably already clicked off this video because you're like, this guy sounds like an idiot. And you would be right. No. This is going to be eight great stocks I'm watching tomorrow and into the rest of this week, uh, tomorrow and then into next week, actually, because it's Thursday. Idiot. So these great plays are going to be viable for watch listing. Put them on the list somewhere. Keep track of them. Keep track of these tabs. Even if you don't love them tomorrow or even over the weekend or next week, these plays are very much viable. No one else is talking about these. We don't ride hype here. We're not about, oh, let's just go on Google Trends and find what's popular. We talk about what's good quality and then folks who find us stick around welcome to the community welcome to the family if you enjoy this kind of content please check out the rest of my videos on youtube i have a 25 part class for free for you go check it out i like it i love it it's there for you it makes you a better trader off the bat secondly my discord patreon is still available uh you won't charge you till 4-1 consider a free trial on your boy go check it out we'd love to have you and if you don't like it leave if you do like it stay if you don't want to check it out just stay here with me you're in good hands like a good neighbor evan is there so uh last thing i want to mention is that i would really appreciate if you like subscribe hit the bell notification it's a free way of supporting your boy and it makes a big difference to me one i will cry less when i fall asleep because i have random folks online who support me and two uh i just like having the likes so i can verify and validate myself and my ego so I'm going to give you ten, five seconds, sounds awkward enough, five seconds to scroll off my big stupid face. To encourage you to do so, we're going to have some horribly awkward eye contact. It's going to encourage you to scroll off my face. Scroll down now, like, subscribe, bell notification. Let's want to see my big dumb face. Let's do this. That prolonged eye contact. Thanks. So with that being said, eight plays you probably never even heard of. There may be one or two in here, but otherwise these are brand new plays. A lot of you, I'm going to show you the supports, resistances, trend lines, patterns, EMA lines, bond profile, RSI, stochastic indicator, and the vortex indicator all on the screen. Talk about what I see, why I love it, and then why you or should not, why you should watch this tip and possibly get into it. With that being said, let's check out this video. Lastly is my cat cam is here on the video. You'll be able to see my cat the whole entire time. He's just lounging with your boy. With that being said, let's get into it. So first is CWK. I actually called CWK over here, I believe, or over here. I forget, but I called it earlier, and they made a really nice move before, and I want to do it again. I want to see the earnings. Earnings historically drops down. Earnings drops down. Earnings ran up to drop down. Earnings dropped down. Earnings ran up. It gets volatile, but every single time... You have pullbacks in the opposite direction where it ran. Ran up, come down. Ran up, come down. Ran down, sorry, <laughs> ran down. Runs down, comes back up. This is an obvious earnings overreaction. There's no way you're telling me this company is now worth 20% later because of some numbers that actually came out just fine. So I think right down here, it's a great earnings overreaction. Secondly, the old resistance area, this old resistance area has become just an absolute beautiful support area as of recently right it's not been tested much but it seems to be holding just fine secondly is the clear risk versus reward and this old support area now becoming a resistance you get off obviously risk two maybe three percent at most to make hopefully about 17 for a full move a good six to one just hit this resistance area is two to one yes cwk is a bit high for me i would have wanted towards 19 dollars I called it at $19, but you're watching the video because you're not on my Patreon. So anywhere in here is just fine. Channel up is gorgeous. Support's gorgeous. The resistance here is gorgeous. Overall, I do love what I see. I think it's a fantastic pick. Let's check the indicators. When it comes to this channel, what's fantastic is that I don't use indicators to scan with or chart with. You can use 
EMA lines for trend. You can use the RSI stochastic and the vortex indicator for momentum, volume, and volatility accordingly. The momentum, trend, volume, and volatility, or MTVVs we call it, is how you can help enter stocks, help you exit stocks, help you plan a trade and then trade that plan, help you have goal setting, all these kinds of great things, but we do not rely on indicators on this channel. We don't, loser. We actually rely on technical analysis and we let the email lines and all these other indicators be our extra lens, our extra icing, while the TA, TA is our cake. If you are new to trading, you're going to see live what I do and how I use them. It's a great time for you. Let's do it together, my sweet baby angels. So first is our EMA lines. The blue is the 10, the 50 is the purple one, and the 200 is red. You can definitely play a 10 crossover if you want to. You cross the 10, you have some really good intraday day, tra day trading positions and some good short-term swinging positions over the 10 EMA line. It is important to note that our best moves come over the 50 though. When you're below the 50, your 10 crosses tend to be kind of weak, right? And while you're over them, see weak, over them, they seem really good. Could you do a 10 cross here? Sure. If you think tomorrow, you're like, by golly, gee willikers, I want to see a little bit of life here. You get a green boy like this that holds up. The 10 email line kind of looks like this. You could go long, use that 1940, 1930 range for a stop loss and be just fine. And have plenty of room to run up while managing your risk just fine. So a 10 cross works well. We call that a momentum entry. You have two types for a beginner. Value, which will be plenty of these on the chart. You're like, wow, what a great deal. Risk is so low. How could I not? Love it. And then other players are going to be like, wow, it's already taken off without me. I need some way of detecting or seeing where risk is going to be. That's the momentum trade. That's what we're talking about here. So while we cross the 10, great way to enter. We also have value. I mean, there's value here, right? TA shows that you're maybe 3% too high, but still a great value. RSI, it's low. Stochastic is running up pretty high here without, without much movement. That would concern me. And if we do see this blue line cross the red line under, you may have ran your you may have run out of steam. It is what it is. But again, the bull vortex here, bulls are very low where you want them. Bears have never been higher. Implying bulls are sidelines and bears are getting exhausted. CWK, if it does hold, here's a fantastic risk first reward. You can easily see much better higher highs higher lows. You could be in this for weeks, months even, if it crosses the 200 and keeps on running up. CWK, I watched this. I would definitely watch it, or I do love what I see. Next is HPP. You down with HPP? Yeah, you know me. Yeah, this is Hudson Pack PD's Income. I'm down with that. Losers. So HPP here is a great broadening wedge. What this means is a new pattern is going to form soon, right? You have skinny moves into broader moves. What's going to eventually happen is that the price action is going to either hug this resistance or it's going to hug this trend line. I am confident HPP risk wise, it is much easier for a short. This is a rock solid resistance area. It doesn't get over $28. And when it does, it comes down very quickly as my cat tries to get in. I have three cats. They are in love with me for some reason. You can easily risk one 2% with plenty of confidence to see hopefully a small move of 6% and a full one, which I'm not guaranteeing would be 30, almost 15 to one odds for a full move. If this does happen to kind of hang out in the 27, 28, even 2650 range, and it starts to kind of hug this resistance, a new trend, a new pattern will form and break out. So we do have a breakout potential here. Um, if it does go green tomorrow, I think well is the best breakout play we'll talk about. But right here, if the markets are red, the first place I'm looking so far is HPP for an easy short. Let's check our indicators together to help us. If we hold the 10 EMA line while we're over the 50, you can ride that momentum, baby, where right? you have a really good time. But as soon as you start to lose the 10, that's your first sign or two of absolute weakness, right? Oh, we lost it and then kaputs, right? So if we hold above the 10 EMA line tomorrow and throughout the next few days, sure, play that breakout. I have no problem with that. If it was me going long here, let's just say it keeps going up like this. If I can use my little mouse here. It's doing this the whole way, right? Boop, 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 boop. Go long all day until your heart's content. If we lose the 10 EMA line, if it gets red, that's my first sign to short. I think it's an easy value short, which means I think we have very little risk here. EMA lines are all below us. The resistance is here showing it's overbought. Our side's overbought. Stochastic's an obvious bearish divergence. These are higher highs, aren't they? These, my friends, are lower highs. That's an obvious bearish divergence. No bullish. These are all 
checking out. That's all checking out. But these bearish ones are obvious. It's a bearish divergence. And then bulls are high, bears are low. HPP, I'm not going to guarantee that it's going to be a short E. Oh, I'm wrapping. We're killing like J-Rock and Trifar Boys level here. Stupid. But <laughs> idiot. But HPP, if it is a red day, tomorrow is the first place I'm looking to make some easy money. Quick day trade, quick swing, and in two or three days, out, easy money. HPP, I'm watching this thing. Get, I do love what I see. Next is IHRT, iHeart Media. To be transparent, I bought a position today around two o'clock. I'm already in it. So take what I'm saying as transparent as I can. I am in it, but I'm not saying you should buy it. You have to buy it. I'm just saying I like it. I want to talk about it. So I, IHRT, I'm already in. This is a very great support spot. Old resistance becoming a support. And then you can just see clearly that 1830, 1820, it's a great support play. Boop, 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 plenty of hits. We also have great lower trend here. It's starting to wedge a bit, isn't it? It's starting to get tighter moves, right? Big, broad moves. Big Bob Ross style, big old, you know, moves with a paintbrush. And now we're getting really tight, tight, tight. As we consolidate, a breakout's more likely to happen as we kind of see this kind of build up. If we break down below 18, I'm getting out instantly. If we lose the support, I'm getting out. Buy back in at 17. If we break over this trend line, long-term hold, you got yourself a winner, got yourself a runner. Overall, we have a great support. Easy resistance to see. Easy trade. You buy in now, you're probably risking 4%, 3.5% at most, and you can hopefully see about 12%. Easy 3 to 1, 4 to 1 play. Again, I'm in at 18.30. It looks pretty good for me. When it comes to our indicators, what we are looking at is a 10 cross is fine. But once again, while you're below the 50, your 10 crosses have a better chance of being weak and feeble like me physically. But over the 50, they're strong, like my will to just keep on living. I want to say something else, but I want to be appropriate as well. <laughs> Sad joke. But while we're over the 50, we have really good strength. I think a 10 cross is too far away. I don't want to wait for that. You can. It's fine. If you have another green day tomorrow and you want to just wait for momentum, sure. Let's see you get one more green boy like this tomorrow and it holds and the email line looks like this. Then you can go for a crossover. But here I want to buy into value. Evan, how do we know that we have value compared to momentum? One, all email lines are above us, so we are value. Technically, we're at value. RSI is at 40. Great. Stochastic is low. That's great. It's a minor. Nah, I can't call it a divergence. Well, it's very it's very close, right? That's a flat bottom perfectly, and then this right here is a lower high. That's a small bullish divergence, but it is there. No bearish ones, and then bulls are bottoming out, and then bears are on top. Every single piece of this puzzle is here minus the EMA lines. If we were in a bull market like we were before, if you were over here on the 50, that's everything lining up for you. But while we are down here below the EMA lines, that's our only one true resistance. But overall, IHRT, low risk, big reward, folks getting back to work, radio stations are fine, comm services are on sale. Overall, IHRT, I love it. I would definitely watch this too. Next is my cat cam once again, just checking up on our boy. He's looking good. He's looking spry. He has calmed down. It is nap time. Good boy. We're all happy you're here. Good, good boy. Oh, he's moving. Next is KRG Kite Realty Group. I think three of these so far have been real estate, which is interesting. I think KRG is another easy short, but I have to mention this is by no means a bearish pattern on the macro scale. I think anywhere below 21, you go long. Anywhere above 22, you want to short just given the risk first reward. Now, I said, well, I'll show you, is the best breakout potential tomorrow? This is also very good. If we do get over this 2280 spot with any type of force, playing the breakout is 100% the correct move. If we do open up tomorrow, we have to fill this gap and then we start to kind of come down and to get a lower low, a lower high, it's an easy short. Again, at $20, going long is the absolute correct move. Up here, not so much. I want to see it short. I want to see if the markets are red tomorrow. I want to see if maybe this kind of like, what looks like a wedge up, which is what I'm watching. This wedge up here possibly breaks down and it's an easy short. And then we could buy back in at 20. So I think if it's red day, break down, short it. If it's a great green day pre-market, play the breakout. We already starting to lose the 10 EMA line. That's the first sign of weakness. You do that quite a lot. But what you really have to lose is a 50, right? You can see a bunch of times while you're over the 50, the 10 means very little. So, of course, I think a 10 crossover is fine. It's okay. But until we lose a 50, it doesn't really mean much. I would definitely short because of value. What do I mean? Our size is a bit high. Stochastic is high and coming down. 
This is a clear bearish divergence. That's a double top. And this right here is a higher one. That is a bearish divergence, not a bullish one. The bottoms match, right? The bottoms match here. Not a bullish divergence, it's bearish. And then bulls just crossed under the red. Ooh, tough break for KRG. See ya, nerd. So I think KRG, here's a very easy short. If the markets look red, if the markets look red, make sure you check. Because if you're just gonna short it because I said so, you're stupid and you have to make sure you double check. This is a very easy breakout play if it goes green in the markets. Now, I think there's better breakout potential, but I would definitely watch this, this one and check it. If it does show red, easy short, I love what I see. Next is MMP. You down with MMP? That joke is played out. So MMP here is a great looking resistance play for a short again tomorrow. Obvious lower highs, even currently. 50, sorry, $50.50. 50 55th, you got the crit Mac here, is definitely a higher high. But until then, you have lower highs and, of course, lower lows as well across the board here. Recently, a higher low, but you can just see it's coming down nicely. A possible channel down here I was looking at, it may be something more like along the lines of this. We're going to see. But overall, this resistance is very tough, right? Traditionally, trend-wise, it's not doing much here. You can risk 1%, 2% realistically to make hope about 6 and for a good move close to nine, easy, four to one, five to one kind of play. This resistance is holding. The support's far away. Would it go long eventually? Yeah, if I can see $45 and some change, I'm going long 100% of the time. But up here, I think if the markets are red, this bad boy is destined to fail. When it comes to our indicators, again, a 10 cross is fine for a first sign of weakness, but you can see the 50 is really the juggernaut here. If you lose the 50, that's when you're in trouble. So I don't think... Waiting for a cross under is a terrible idea. It's 2% away. That's probably one-fourth of your maximum profit you're going to see. If you cross under the 50, use the 10 email line as your spy limit so you don't get caught shorting and getting you know, blasted out. That's fine. So I think a 50 cross is fine, but I do think that shorting here makes sense. When it comes to our indicators, RSI, it's high. Stochastic, it's high. Again, we have an obvious bearish divergence. It's obvious from Pluto, my dude. These are not right. These are higher highs. These are lower highs. That's clear. What's interesting, though, is that we also have one when consider is a possible small bullish divergence. Interesting. It's forming both. And then bulls and bears are tied, but bulls are crossing over here. This is more of a this is more of a confusing one because MMP again can truly go either way. What's gonna dictate it is macro markets and whatever sector and industry it's in, where that goes as a whole. If the green crosses the red with strength, the RSI has room to run, this bad boy could easily break out and go higher. But if there's a red market and everything starts to kind of curl south, this bad boy can collapse very quickly. It can go either way. Plan a direction. If it's me, I'm gonna go, I want plan red for this bad boy make my plan on red if it breaks out i'm not going to touch it if it goes red i'll play it that's what i would do risk management make a plan stick to the plan plan a trade trade a plan it's that simple but i think mmp easy play i would definitely watch list it our last cat cam of the day is zoomed in real quick just to show you he's looking good he's looking sleepy can i possibly get you a good angle Shh. Shh. oh my goodness wrong way oh Oh, 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 there he is in all his glory. He's here. We're so blessed that he's here. Next is NEXT, another great short. I'm not going to harp long on this one. It is the literal exact setup as MMP, almost to a T. Boy, my wrapping today is gross. This is a great look again. Possible channel down off a big move. And this resistance area is rock solid, old support, becoming a resistance. Can easily risk 4 or 5%, you know, small move. To see 20 on a good move, a great move would be almost a trade of the year, if I'm being honest with you. It is a penny stock. It's going to be volatile. You have to have cojones. You got to have just nuts or it's not going to be doing what you want it to do. So make sure you guys have a plan. Risk management, anything over $4 or 410 if it starts to show weak up here, easy risk versus reward. I do love what I see. 
The exact same things I said before can be applied here. While you're over the 10, you're going to have a good time. Below the 50, you're going to have a real bad time. I'm not going for a 50 cross under, but a 10 one, if I can get a 10 cross under and see 4 or 5% easily, easy day trade for a short here for lose the 10. RSI, it's high. Stochastic, it's low. But before you're like, what is it? it's low. Ugh. Look at this. Again, my boy, these are lower highs. These are higher lows. This is a bearish divergence. It also has no bullish divergence. This is a low to a high. This is a low to a high. It's a bearish divergence. Bulls are on top, bears are low. What more do you want from me? I think NEXT here is a very easy short. If the markets look weak, easy money, you can make seven, eight, 10% in a day. Make your whole month if you levered properly with good risk management. Overall, NEXT, I love a short here. I would definitely watch this. Tip. I do love what I see. Next is WAB. We have a good, uh, you know, Waluigi joke here. This is a WAB tech looking play. A great play. I was uh, cussing up a storm in my pre-market video for my Patreon uh, that I missed the entry here. I saw it. I knew it was going to stay and they ran up 2% here. And again, some of you are like, it's only 2%. Well, you're down like 4% of your portfolio. So shut up, loser. So <laughs> just, just kidding. But WAB here, great trend up. Great channel up here. And it's starting to form a gorgeous support. I zoomed in like an idiot. This area at 86 and 87 is absolutely rock solid. If I can see it lower, I want to buy in at 88. What I'm seeing though that's beautiful is just this gap. That's a nice gap. You know what I mean? This is a really good looking gap here. The reason is on any time frame you choose, 9 out of 10 times gaps get filled. What do I mean? Gaps usually show two things. One, a gap, usually a big one, is that daily or at least the next like, week or so. The momentum is going to be extremely hard in that direction, and it's not going to come back and touch it. Or in many cases, it gets filled. Again, this gap here gets filled by this price action. This gap here got filled by this price action. This gap here, right there, got filled by this price action. Almost every single gap, like this got formed, and what happened? Price action went, let me fill that real quick, and then took off after that. So this gap up here gives us at least a window for 4 or 5% pretty easily. The risk is higher because it already took off, but overall, a channel up with a great gap I want to see filled. Pause. Uh, EMA crossovers, no bueno. It's too far away. I don't want to wait, you know, 2%, my whole entire profit margin for a crossover. But I do get one because I buy in the value and it holds. I'll be happy to run up all three of these. You know, if we get over this and that holds over the 200, the 50, or the 10, we cross, we hold over. I'm cool with that. Overall, our size though, stochastic, it's low. I don't see any divergences. This is not a, this is a small bearish one. That's why it dipped on us. See this? Oh, there's no match. See that? That's why it came down. But you can also see on the more macro scale, these are lower highs, right? So that, che that checks out. That's okay. That's good. Now, when it comes to our bullish divergence, you know, there's a possibility for one here. I'm not putting a lot of emphasis into it, but overall, negative four is a good value. Bulls are on top, bears are tied. We're consolidating. It makes sense. We are going sideways currently. WAB, 2% lower, is an absolute steal. Chef kiss. And I think here still, it's a really good play. Overall, I'd watch this dip. I do love what I see. <music> Lastly, as well, this was an easy short at $89. But now that we have this, you have two options. One, hey, it's still an easy short. This is definitely overextended, which it is. I mean, this is not natural. It's 1% a day. That's pretty crazy. If I zoom out, um, this is literally pre-COVID resistance. And again, even farther over here, the POC is pre-COVID. I mean, this is a very, very untouched territory. But if you always think, oh, I'm late, I can't enter, you're never going to be early deep thoughts. So I think that going long here for a breakout is fine when you have an EMA line we'll watch and see where we're at. But I think also it's a very easy short. Again, what's the determinant for me is where the macro markets go. Easy short if it's red, easy breakout if it's green. If any of these plays tomorrow is a breakout, it's W-E-L-L -L for sure. When it comes to our indicators, this is critical. While we're over the 50, the 10 runups are gorgeous, right? So if you hold the 10, you can continue to go long. But as soon as we lose, the 10, I would probably get off this bad boy and retest at the 50. It's overbought. It's overbought. Mm, it's overbought, right? So it's definitely up here, which is all-time highs. But as long as we close over the line, we're good to go. And just to clarify, you see how this closed over it? See how this closed over it? All right, if we have a red boy, 
that closes like this and the body is beneath the, the EMA line, that's what I mean. If we're over the EMA line, if we wick down and come back, that doesn't count. So as long as we're over the 10, you're good to go long for a breakout. If it does come down, easy short. Overall, W-E-L-L, -L, I'd watch this dip. I do love what I see. Thank you so much for being here. It means the world to me. We'll see you guys on Sunday, actually Saturday. We're going to be doing my review of picks and actually all my purchases and why I bought them and how they went and turned out. So see you guys on Saturday for that episode and catch you guys on Sunday for another watch list. Thank you so much for being here. Check out my Patreon. I want you to check out the Patreon. We'll see you guys later. Thank you so much.